welcome back. We're now ready for module two, now with a focus on designing report layouts. In this module then, we'll introduce Report Builder, look at designing report layouts, and how you can dynamically set properties. For this video, let's start with Report Builder itself. You've already been introduced in module one, that is the desktop tool, and the only tool that you can use to develop a, re a paginated report. In fact, there's three things that Report Builder does. It allows you to develop your report, to run it and preview the result, and then to publish it when you're ready to the Power BI service. Report Builder is available as a download from Microsoft, and there are a few prerequisites. You simply need Windows 7 or later, and Microsoft.NET Framework 4.5. Now, we'll make the note that Report Builder isn't the end user experience. It is a tool designed intentionally for authoring. The intention will be that you'll publish your report to the service, and thereupon the consumption takes place either in a web browser, a mobile app, or through some embedded scenario. Now, one of the first things you're likely to see when you launch Report Builder is the Getting Started window. The Getting Started window helps you get started quickly, and it's great for beginners as well. You can use it to create a new report, either a blank report, or you can leverage three different wizards to quickly get started. You can open an existing report from your file system or from a list of recently opened reports. And this will open automatically. If you don't like it, there is a checkbox in the bottom left corner that allows you to disable it. I love the wizards. You love the wizards? I do. It's a great way to get started. For a lot of people who have used desktop, per se, they can, anybody can use a wizard. Well, stay tuned, because I think we might have a demonstration coming up shortly that might keep you happy, Report Bear. Thankfully. All right, well, let's then begin about the topic of layout. So what you're going to see in Report Builder is the report canvas for designing a single report at a time. Optionally, you can add a ruler that's going to help you guide and, and uh, lay out in a, in a certain way with accuracy, although we're going to show you this great alignment tools already built in. I often find that I don't use that ruler. I rely on the, um, the snap to grid type layout. Design functionality is available from quick access commands, and I'll point them out to you in a moment. Uh, there's a ribbon with a host of commands, and there are various panes that will be very useful as you're configuring different types of report items. Let's take a look then. Here it is, Report Builder. What you'll find in the middle is the Report Canvas. At the very top then, you'll find the Quick Access commands that allows you to save, and we really do recommend you save your progress as often as you can remember. Yes. All right, control S is my friend, actually, as I keep <laughs> developing. Uh, and when you do make those mistakes, you'll find the quick access commands also provide undo and redo. Mm -hmm. Okay, the classic shortcuts of control Z and control Y work there as well. Top right corner, you'll see at a glance the currently authenticated user, and if there's a need, you can either sign in or switch account. This will become relevant when you're publishing your report to the Power BI service. Yep. The ribbon, anybody familiar with Office products will be familiar with the ribbon, and the ribbon has these four tabs of file, home, insert, and view. On the left is the report data pane that's going to present to you the resources that you have to build up your report layout. And then across the top of the report canvas, there's a parameters pane. It's basically a grid. It's rows and columns, and where you have parameters typically used to allow your report users to enter values, like the sales order number for their uh, report, um, you've got a degree of control over the placement horizontally and vertically of those parameters. Yes, and people really like to make sure they have parameters in a particular order. So well, I'm pretty particular about that. Yes. There's a certain way, uh, workflow in a way, as to how that should happen. In fact, in module four, when we look at parameters in more detail, um, it will be imperative that you get them in the right order for certain scenarios like, and stay tuned, for the topic of cascading parameters. Yes. Now, on the right-hand side is the properties pane. In fact, it's turned off by default, but I always turn it on uh, because when you select an item or, in fact, multi-select items in the report canvas, it exposes to you the properties, um, either to read them and understand what they are or, where necessary, you can edit them. Now, it can be overwhelming for a beginner, by the way. We'll take a closer look at the properties pane. But what you'll find is that commonly configured properties are often available in a more friendly way. Mm -hmm. Now, beneath the grouping pane, that when we introduced you in module five, the data region known as a tablex and its variants of table, matrix, and list, the grouping pane is where you'll configure the groupings for your data. 
And then lastly, in the bottom right corner, don't overlook the fact that you've got a zoom control for the report canvas. Zoom in, zoom out. Uh, if I'm doing very pixel perfect work, I will often zoom right in and it gives me you know, a much better control over placement and sizing and alignment. Uh, there's also to the left of the zoom control, um, a very handy couple of buttons that allow you to toggle between design and preview mode. All right, let's take a closer look at the ribbons then. There are four ribbon tabs. Beginning with file, we use this for new, open, save, and save as. Uh, notice that when you save as, there's the ability to save back to your PC, or as we'll be covering later in the course in module seven, the ability to publish to the Power BI service. Um, let's be clear that when you're creating and developing a report, you're actually developing an RDL file. What's this RDL stand for, Peter? Uh, it's an acronym for? Report definition language. Yes, indeed it is. This is the um, XML language that defines the entire report itself. So when you save this locally, it'll just be an RDL document. Um, and when you publish it to the service, it will become a paginated report in the workspace. Now, there's the ability also to open the options from that file ribbon tab. Uh, the options are useful for accessing uh, resources like links to community forums, feedback, the Power BI team blog, yep. catch up with the latest, greatest news from the engineering group. Um, there's also the ability to check for updates. And this is a product that is likely to be updated over time, Chris. Yeah, we won't be updating it as often as the desktop tool does, but you'll be seeing a fair amount of updates for a report builder throughout each year. All right, I think by default, um, you'll be automatically notified uh, if an update's become available, and then That's you can right. download it. You could use the options to turn that off if you didn't want to ever know about a better release becoming available. Well, for certain enterprise organizations, they like to control exactly what version of report builder is used, so they often turn that off. Right. All right, next let's take a look at the home ribbon. Um, the first command here is the run command, all right? So you can switch between design and preview. I've already pointed out that the other way to do that is at the bottom right, just to the left of the zoom, you can access it there as well. The rest of the capabilities are all about formatting, um, whether it's copy paste, formatting fonts, paragraphs, borders, numbers, and alignment. The insert ribbon tab, then presents to you all of the tools that you have to add objects to your report design layout. They consist of data regions, data visualizations, and report items. We're going to look at them in more detail in module five. Um, there's the ability to add sub-reports, but you might notice it's ghosted on the ribbon. Yes, it's ghosted on the ribbon for now, simply because we have not added the sub-reports capability to the service yet. However, by the time you view this video or shortly thereafter, it may be there at that point because we're actively working on it. And that's a good reason to leave the notifications on. Yep. The new version's available. Very and true. Within time, sub-reports will become an option for you. Yes. Now, in your report layout, there's the ability also to turn on or off headers and footers. And we'll talk about report layout shortly. Lastly, on the view ribbon tab, this is where you can turn on or off that ruler to help you uh, place your items on the report canvas. Uh, and then there are the four panes that you can choose to turn on or off according to the real estate space that you need. You know, often these days, Chris, with the size of monitors, I leave them on at all times. But yes. if you're constrained for space, you might toggle them on or off. Yeah, I, I do the same thing as well. I often have all of them on just because I, I have such a wide monitor. There's no reason to keep them off. That's, that's the luxury of a wide monitor. Yes. All right, so a, a quick look then at those panes. Let's focus on two of them, the report data and the properties. So the report data that you'll find docked to the left of Report Builder is there to help you manage and explore your resources to assist in designing your report layout. So what you'll find available to you are built-in fields. So uh, fields such as what's the report name, execution time, yep. uh, page and, numbering. Yeah, page numbering. And uh, also, you know, who is the user that is opening this report. Yes, that's actually a very important field, which I'm sure we'll touch on throughout this Absolutely. course. Absolutely, when we talk about data permissions, we'll use the built-in field with the user ID to perhaps filter the data according to what they're allowed to see. Yep. Report parameters are defined here as well. We can create them, we can edit them. Images that you'll embed into the report are available here as well. Your data sources and data sets that we're going to cover off in the next module are here as well. Now you can see in the image, that there's a data source for the AdventureWorks DW2016. There's a single data set named sales order. And when it's expanded, it presents to us the fields. And these fields are what we use to lay out our report designs. 
The properties pane that we've already uh, introduced uh, presents to you the properties of any selected or multi-selected items on the canvas. Um, do note that it can be overwhelming for a beginner. It could be lots of properties. So you've got some options here. Um, you could decide to keep them grouped by type. And if you look at the, uh, the image on the slide, you'll see that there are groupings like code and data only and general. Um, if you know the name of the property, you might opt to sort them alphabetically. And that way it might be easier for you to locate them. Just a tip there, um, when you've got an object on the report, you might choose to right click it as well. And that might mean that you've got a property page that opens. A window opens and it provides uh, usually a better experience for configuring commonly accessed properties. So don't feel you always need to come to the properties pane to do things. Sometimes you need to, but often there are a better way with the property pages. So a closer look at this, what you'll see at the top left of the properties pane is the item that you've got selected. Here it happens to be the report itself. You've got that ability to toggle whether we're going to look at them grouped or alphabetical. Here's an example of a property name and the corresponding value. And then you can expand those property groups to reveal sub-properties. And then for the report itself, this object has its own property page. And so one way to open the property page is you can just click here in the properties window. As a tip, uh, when you go to edit a property, the way that I do it is I click the name of the property. And that therefore selects the value, and then I just commence typing or selecting from a drop-down list. Yeah. All right, discussion now about report preview. You'll do this a lot when you're developing your reports. You'll begin with the canvas, start laying out the design, and then you'll go, well, what does it really look like? And so you'll find yourself toggling to preview mode, and then you'll go, OK, that looks great. Ah, but there's room for improvement. Toggle back to design mode, whereupon you make some adjustments, and then you switch back to preview. So, no question about it, I will be doing this hundreds of times, and it becomes an automatic reflex, in fact. Design, preview, design, preview. Yeah, one of the things that I really like here is the uh, print layout view, where you can actually see what it'll look like in the printed page, and you can actually interact with the report seeing it in the uh, final format. So if you're trying to create a document that's in letter format that's a portrait document, you can just switch on that mode, and it'll give you a great way to go interact with the report and see exactly what the ac exported format will look like. A lot of report authors, as they first get started with the tool, oftentimes uh, run into issues where they have blank pages or things like that. They don't really know how it's going to be laid out. That's a great tool to, to kind of highlight here in terms of one of the advantages of report building. Well, let's make sure in the, in the following demo yes. that we point that out. Absolutely. So what we see in this mode, you've got the properties pane here. We see the single property of the sales order number. And then we've got the ability to view the report. Now what you'll find is, and we'll talk about this in module four with the parameters, that if parameters require entry and there's no defaults for them, then the user won't see the report yet. They'll have to fill in the parameter values and then click view report. Yep. And then of course, if we're going to switch to a different sales order number, we'll just modify the number in the parameter box and then click the view report again. Yep. All right, so in preview, there is a different ribbon. Uh, it's got its file ribbon tab and the run ribbon tab. So on the run ribbon tab, you can toggle back to design mode, uh, or you can start to zoom, page navigate, refresh, stop the refresh if it's taking too long. There are print commands, and Chris has talked about the print layout there. The ability to export to a different format. You can collapse the parameters pane. You can also do a text search across your report. So here's an example of what would happen when we click on the export command, revealing to us these eight supported rendering formats. Yep, the export will look and act just like it does in the Power BI service. I know Paginated Report Bear likes this topic. Wizards. So a word Ooh. about the wizards. Would you like to talk about the wizards? Because I know it's a favorite topic. Well, uh, the, so, you know, oftentimes people are like, oh, who uses the wizards? Actually, a lot of people do because they want to get started very quickly creating a table, a chart, or even a map. And you can go right to it from the, uh, from the initial getting started screen. Or if you go and want to add any of those visuals from the ribbon, you can choose to do it via wizard. And it walks you through each of the steps. Great. So there are three wizards. That's right. You need to create a table or a matrix. You want to create a chart or if you want to create a map. So, correct, two ways. Getting started, launch straight into a wizard, insert ribbon tab, launch the wizard from there. Yep. All right, let's wrap up then with 
a development methodology. Now, there's no exact recipe or science about how you're going to develop your paginated reporting, but it typically follows these steps. You're going to create the report, and by the way, you can have multiple instances of Report Builder open. That's true. It's dedicated to one RDL document at a time. Yep. So let's just say we open up Report Builder. We've got the Getting Started screen. You choose your options. It could be Wizard or Blank Report. If you're going to go the Blank Report route, you're going to consider where's my data coming from. You'll create a data source, and then you'll define one or more data sets that are commands to retrieve data from the data source. Mm -hmm. If there's parameterization requirements, you'll define these. And then you get to lay out the report on the canvas. On your insert ribbon tab, you've got all of those data regions, visualizations, and report items. You're constantly going to be testing and previewing. And once you're satisfied that it's ready for consumption, you're then going to save as to a Power BI service workspace on dedicated capacity, whereupon the report is published and you may then need to consider some post-publication tasks that we'll talk about in this course in Module 7. All right, well, that brings the introduction to Report Builder to an end. I'm really excited to see what's coming next. Yes.